Hi Brainbox. Welcome to Brainbox YouTube channel. In our previous video, we basically discussed the definitions of ratio and proportion. In this video, we will continue our discussion on ratio and proportion. We will discuss the types of proportion and solve word problems involving ratio and proportion. But before we begin, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to keep you posted for more review topics. You can also avail of our CSE books and other reviewers. Just click the link to our shop in the caption below. We have already learned that a proportion is a mathematical statement showing that two ratios are equal. In addition, we have also learned that in a proportion, the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means. In general, we have three types of proportions, namely, direct, inverse, and partitive proportion. In direct proportion, one quantity increases with the other quantity at the same rate and vice versa. For instance, if we double the quantity of one ratio in a proportion, the other quantity will double as well. The same is true if we triple the quantity of one ratio in a proportion. To help you understand this relationship, here is an example for you. A florist uses 150 centimeters of ribbon in arranging six bouquets of roses. How much ribbon will be needed if there are 15 orders of the same bouquet? In this problem, we are being asked how much ribbon will be needed for 15 bouquets if it takes 150 centimeters of ribbon to arrange six bouquets. Hence, we can denote the total length of ribbon needed as n. We can now write the proportion as 150 centimeters to 6 bouquets equals n to 15 bouquets. Multiplying the extremes and the means, we get 6n equals 150 times 15. We can simplify the equation as 6n equals 2250. Then, divide both sides of the equation by 6 which will give us the value of n equals 375. Thus, the florist needs 375 centimeters of ribbon to arrange 15 bouquets of roses. Notice that as the number of bouquets increases, the length of ribbon needed also increases. Whereas, in an inverse proportion, one quantity increases as the other decreases. This shows an inverse relationship in some quantities, such as in resource consumption and work. For example, if six men can paint the room in 15 hours, how many hours will it take 15 men to finish the same job? In this problem, we are to find the number of hours it will take for 15 men to paint the room which six men can do in 15 hours. We can denote the number of hours as n. Hence. This relationship can be expressed in the proportion 6 men is to 15 hours as 15 men is to n. In solving inverse proportions, we do not follow the procedure discussed in direct proportion. Instead of multiplying for the extremes and means, we will multiply the terms in each side of the equation. Divide both sides of the equation by 15 and this will give us the value of n which is 6 hours. It will take 6 hours for 15 men to paint the room. The third type of proportion is the partitive proportion. Herein, one quantity is being partitioned into several equal or unequal parts. Thus, partitive proportion is represented as a ratio of different numbers of partitions that can be added to get the totality of all the parts. In this type of proportion, there is a constant of proportionality which is commonly an unknown variable. Here are examples of word problems involving partitive proportions. Lily, Edna, and Shane were selling cookies at different locations. The number of cookies sold by each was in the ratio 4 to 6 to 3. If there are a total of 169 cookies sold, how many cookies were sold by Lily, Edna, and Shane, respectively. To solve this problem, 
We let x as the constant of proportionality and then affix the variable x to each of the partitions of the proportion. Next, add all the terms and equate to the totality of the parts. Simplify the resulting equation, and then divide both sides by 13 to solve for x. Hence, x is 13. To determine the number of cookies each girl sold, multiply the value of x to each of the partition. Thus, Lily, Edna, and Shane sold 52, 78, and 39 cookies, respectively. Let's have another example. Based on the poll, the number of students who prefer Chinese, Japanese, and Filipino food is in the ratio 7 to 4 to 9. If there are a total of 400 students who answered the poll, how many students prefer Filipino food? We can still use the steps in the previous example to solve this problem. First, we let x be the constant of proportionality. Next, we affix the variable x to each of the partitions of the proportion. Then, add all the terms and equate to the totality of the parts. Simplify the equation and then solve for x. Since the problem only asks for the number of students who prefer Filipino food, multiply the value of x to the partition that corresponds to the number of students who chose Filipino food. Hence, there are 180 students who prefer Filipino food. Since we were already able to have a few examples, let us now proceed to our practice exercises to assess and measure your understanding and learning progress on this topic. There will only be four items, and you have one minute to answer each item. Good luck! Number one, a friendship bracelet consists of red, orange, and yellow beads. If there are 45 red and 135 orange beads in the bracelet, write the ratio of red to orange beads in its simplest form. Timer starts now. Time is up. The correct answer is 1 to 3. Number 2. 8 pipes can fill a tank in just 6 hours. How long will it take to fill the same tank if 12 pipes are working at the same time and at the same rate? Timer starts now. Time is up. The correct answer is 4 hours. This problem is an inverse proportion problem. In this problem, we are to find the number of hours it will take to fill a tank using 12 pipes, 
which eight pipes can fill a tank in six hours. We can denote the number of hours as n. Hence, this relationship can be expressed in the proportion 8 pipes is to 6 hours equals 12 pipes is to n. Since this is an inverse proportion problem, we will multiply the terms each sides. Divide both sides of the equation by 48 and this will give us the value of n which is 4 hours. It will take 4 hours to fill a tank using 12 pipes. Number 3. Three packs of Graham crackers can make 75 pieces of Graham balls. How many packs of crackers will be needed to make 225 pieces of Graham balls? Timer starts now. Time is up. The correct answer is 9 packs. Compared to number 2, this is a direct proportion problem. We are asked how many packs of crackers are needed to make 225 pieces of Graham balls if it takes 3 packs to make 75 Graham balls. Thus, we will denote the number of packs of Graham crackers as n. We can now write the proportion as 3 packs is to 75 Graham balls equals n is to 225 Graham balls. We will multiply the extremes and means. Hence, we get 75 n equals 675. Divide both sides by 75, and we will get n equals 9 packs. Number 4. Our key. Jello and JL agreed that the profit of their business will be divided in the ratio 4 to 5 to 6. How much should Arki receive if the total profit amounted to 12,000 pesos? Timer starts now. Time is up. The correct answer is 3,200 pesos. To solve this problem, we let x as the constant of proportionality and then affix the variable x to each of the partitions of the proportion. Next, add all the terms and equate to the totality of the parts. Simplify the resulting equation, and then divide both sides by 15 to solve for x. Hence, x is 800 pesos. Since the problem only asks how much Arki would receive, multiply x to 4. Thus, Arki will receive 3,200 pesos. That's a wrap. Share this video for others to learn too. If you want to learn more, 
you can avail of our CSE books and other reviewers. Just click the link to our shop in the caption below. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.